Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a double exposure in Final Cut Pro. There are two methods that I use depending on the types of shots that I have and how I want the double exposure to look. I'm going to go over both of those methods and I'll explore a couple of ways in which you can be creative with your own double exposures. By the way, if you're new to the channel and you're into Final Cut Pro tutorials, but you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do that right now. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you get notified when I post new videos, because we sometimes give away some really cool stuff on the channel and I don't want you to miss out on that. Okay, let's get into the tutorial. Let's talk about the first method to create a double exposure in Final Cut Pro, which also happens to be the easiest method if you have the right shot to work with in the first place. For this first example, I have this stock clip of a woman on a white background. This is the ideal shot where you have a clear subject on a white background or even a light background, which could be the sky or anything that is much brighter than your subject. I'm going to create this double exposure with this time-lapse shot of the sun setting. I'll drop this clip on top of the clip of the sun and the first step is to set the blend mode to screen. And just like that, we're already halfway done with this double exposure. I think the shot could use a little more contrast, so I'll head over to my color wheels and I'll crush the shadows to make her hair a little darker and I'll boost the highlights slightly to white out the background completely and to create a bit of contrast on this woman. I might also drop the saturation here a little bit, which will make her look a little less orange and that looks great. Let me turn the color wheels off and on again so you can see the before and after of what that does. And just like that, this first shot is done. Let me show you another example using the same screen blend mode method using this shot of the Berlin TV tower, which Donna shot through the world time clock when we were in Berlin. This shot will work well because we have a bright sky that is clearly separate from the darker subject. I'll create the double exposure with this shot of the red town hall. I'll drop this clip on top of the other one and set the blend mode to screen. Now in these white areas here, I don't want to see the building at all. So I can go over to my color wheels and boost the highlights until those areas go completely white. I'll also crush the shadows and bring the midtones down to create a bit more contrast. And this is the final double exposure. The second method involves a few more steps but it does give you the ability to customize your double exposure a bit more and allows you to be a bit more creative. The second method is the Luma Key method. For the first example, I'm going to use this shot of me looking up while flying my drone, and I'll create the double exposure with this drone shot of Lake Bled. I've already got the clips on top of each other, so I'll head over to my effects browser and add the Luma Kia effect onto the clip of me. I'll change the view from composite to matte so that I can get a better idea of what's being keyed out. I'll adjust the white value here until the background is completely gone, and I'll adjust the black value to make sure my jacket is nice and dark. You can adjust the Luma roll-off to create some contrast between the light and the dark areas. You'll notice how this creates a busier curve between the black and white values, and this also helps to control some of the details. So we'll look at that again in a second. I'll switch back to composite view, and it doesn't look great, yet. Next, I'll go to my color wheels, and I'll boost the highlights and the master exposure until the background is totally white. I'll add a color curves adjustment to create a bit more contrast in my shape here, specifically on the side of my face and ears. If I boost the highlights too much, I'll start seeing some blue, which I don't want. So about there is good, and I'll crush the dark areas. If I adjust the Luma roll off, I can add back some of the details in my jacket, just so that it's not a totally black shape. If I switch this off and on again, notice how the highlight on the side of my face is a bit more obvious here. This is what it looks like. I could stop right there and that would be fine, but I want to take this a little further. So I'm going to show you a few quick things to take this double exposure to the next level. The first thing I'm going to do is change the scale and position of the clip of me so that it fills the screen more. I'll scale it up to 150% and I'll position it right about there. I'll also reposition the drone shot underneath so that the castle on the hill doesn't get lost towards the end of the shot. This is what it looks like now. One more adjustment I'd like to make is to have the double exposure effect fade in. To do that, you can copy the two clips and create a compound clip, then delete the drone clip and make a compound clip of just the clip of me. The reason I'm making a compound clip here is because this clip has been stabilized and when I cut it later on, it'll reanalyze the motion and change the position of the clip slightly. 
So with both compound clips made, I can line them up and make a cut on both clips somewhere down the middle. I'll delete the beginning of this compound clip and then the end of this compound clip. I'll click on the cut between the two clips and hit Command T to create a cross dissolve and then I'll drag that out to extend the duration. With the transition selected, I'll head over to the inspector and set the ease amount to 100. When I play that back, the double exposure will slowly transition in. I could do the same thing with the drone shot instead of the clip of me, and by following those same steps I just showed you, that would look like this. As you can see, with the second method, you have quite a bit more control over your double exposure. Let's do one more example with this method and we'll do something slightly different here too. I'm going to take this shot of Donna walking in Krakow and create a double exposure using this shot of the sun in the sky. The shot of Donna isn't ideal for this effect because there are these dark areas around the frame which the luma key effect won't get rid of, but I'm going to show you how to get around that. I'll add the luma key effect, switch to matte view, and I'll adjust the luma roll off for some contrast, and then I'll change the black and white values until I've gotten most of the background to white. For this one, I'm going to do something different and invert the mask. Because the black areas are the areas where the other shot will show through, by inverting the key, Donna's facial features and beanie and jacket are going to stay visible while the rest will be transparent. The next step is to get rid of these areas in the background that are still white. I'll switch back to composite view and I'll hide the shot underneath by hitting the shortcut V. Next, I'll zoom out to 50% and I'll add a draw mask effect and I'll draw a mask around Donna so that we can get rid of this stuff in the background. I'll feather it slightly and create a keyframe here. I'll move my playhead to the beginning of the clip and adjust the keyframes to make sure I'm not masking out any part of Donna, and then I'll go to the end of the clip and adjust the mask here as well. I specifically want to get rid of these dark areas that come close to Donna's coat, so I'll take a little more care over here. I'll scrub through this entire clip, slowly adjusting the mask as I need to, to make sure that it's a nice clean mask. I'll enable this clip again, and I'll drop the saturation on my color wheel here to just about there. And this is the final shot. Those are the two methods that I use to create double exposures in Final Cut Pro. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I'd love to see some of your double exposures if you try this technique out. So feel free to tag us on Instagram at brad.and.donna and I'll go check it out. If this tutorial was helpful to you, please hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Stay safe people and I'll catch you in the next one.